Um, <laughs> so the next slide, number um, number 19, is talking. This is from the University of Alberta, and this is um, where they took diversity. Like I said, this would be a school sample, and so. If you have an unhealthy one, then they link it to all these conditions, IBD, IBS. I'm going to talk a little bit about SIBO. I don't know if you've heard of that one, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Leaky gut, inflammation, arthritis, uh, fatigue, diabetes, celiac, um, eczema, and obesity. These are some of the, the results of an out of balance and a low microbial um, bacteria. How many people have heard of SIBO? Well, SIBO is defined as an increase of number of bacteria or changes in the types and strains of bacteria normally present in the small intestine. Right up here where, you're, where the stomach dumps into the small intestine, you've got this, you've got your pancreas and your liver sitting right here, okay? This <clears throat> affects both the structure and function of the small bowel and what happens is it becomes erratic okay, in terms of its motility. So what happens is the real, what happens with SIBO is bacteria that sometimes should be in your colon ends up up here in your small intestine. Now you have a, uh, a lot of symptoms when you have SIBO. Uh, and it could be CO and you just replace the B for a, for a Y and that's yeast. So it could be either one of those, SIBO or CO. Some of the symptoms are gas and bloating, especially here in this area. And you can also have a lot of IBS symptoms in the lower colon, okay? So that's abdominal pain, nutritional deficiencies, okay? Um, malabsorption of, you know, it's not really folks, what you even digest is what you absorb. So if your digestion's off, if your pancreas is weak, if your liver gallbladder is not functioning well, then you don't digest your protein, starches, and fats as well as you should. Um, diarrhea or constipation, joint pain, and it's the biggest cause, they think, of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease today. And how does it get there? I mean, what, what happens? Well, if you look at why does it occur in us, and now uh, it's in epidemic proportions, uh, it occurs because our stomach acid levels lower. And if you take something to make that happen on top of it, it just makes it worse. So it helps control the proper acid alkaline balance in your digestive tract, okay? It, it, it comes and it, it occurs because your liver's already compromised, okay? Bile, B-I-L-E, goes from the liver to the gallbladder to the gut. What does bile contain? Three things, hormones, <laughs> bile salt, which is how you break down fat, okay, even, I don't care if you're eating a steak or an omega-3, you have to have bile salt from the liver gallbladder and you have to have the lipase enzyme from your pancreas that come together right after the point of the stomach in the small intestine, right in here, if you look on your sheet, right past the stomach, you see that yellow, uh, the yellow organ underneath the stomach, that's your pancreas. And then the gallbladder feeds right into that pancreatic duct right there. And that's where you emulsify. So what, by that I mean you take a large fat molecule and make it small. Because that's the only way you can absorb it through the gut wall if it's the molecule small. And I'll tell you, doing a lot of stool analysis, I see more fatty stools than I could, and a lot of people don't digest fat. And even though I know the keto diets are big today and you know, you want to t always take omega-3s, your, your pancreas and your liver gallbladder have to work. And when your liver becomes stagnant, it, this is what it means. It means the bile is not flowing for, to the gallbladder well. It's being held up in the liver, in the bile ducts, and it becomes coagulated and sluggish. So you don't release the bile salt. You see what I mean? To help emulsify fats and things like that. Uh, your pancreas not producing enough digestive enzymes like protease, amylase, and lipase. And however, that's very important, you know, because pancreas also works with helping with, you know, insulin. So it's, it's got two dual purposes. 
Okay, bacterial migration. Okay, you can, I don't really use the word backwash, but it is kind of a, we have three, um, actually, we have three little sphincters. One is the esophageal between the esophagus and the stomach up here. We have one called the pyloric between the, the end of the stomach and the small intestine. And then we have the ileocecal valve, which is in between the small intestine and the large intestine. These open and shut by the control of hormones. And so it's really important that these shut and open properly. As we age, this does not happen as well. So the, back, the contents of the colon, we can have something called backward peristalsis. And so what happens is the bacteria from the colon begins to back up into the small intestine until it gets up into here. And then what happens is it sits there and ferments. Now the fermentation that happens with this backward migration of bacteria is methane is produced and hydrogen is produced, which would be the same as if you drank alcohol. That's why the liver sitting here gets fatty. So they do a breath test for this. So they test your breath just like they would if you were a DUI almost. But they breath, they breath test you for methane, high methane levels and high hydrogen levels. However, a lot of times the doctors will just go on symptoms because the tests sometimes aren't quite as accurate as they should be. Um, so this, here's another one that's really big. Ideally, your body's a very brilliant, it's brilliant in what it does. So what should happen is you should eat dinner and then you should wait three hours before you lay down. Okay, that's ideal. And what happens is if you don't do that, the, what the body's want, wanting to do is release all the food from the stomach while you're sleeping, okay, and push it through peristalsis down to the colon so that when you get up in the morning, you have a bowel movement. That's ideal. Well, what happens is if there's a lot of food left in the stomach when you lay down, then that food that's trying to release from the stomach into the small intestine, it can't release all of it. And so it gets stuck up there in the upper small intestine, and that's where that bacterial fermentation begins. And so that's another way that you can create this SIBO and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease.